Hey, it's Terry with Something Spooky, and in this video it's going to be Blade vs. Underworld as we take two leather-wearing vampire rock stars and put their film series against each other and see who prevails. So they are both, of course, from around the millennium. They were both around the year 2000 when vampires in trench coats was very much a thing, um, and these were two of the biggest examples of that in Hollywood. Blade actually deserves a lot of credit for that from further back, uh, back to 1973 is when that comic was first released in Marvel. And I don't know how many like leather, you know, kind of rock star uh, vampires I can think of before that. So Blade is definitely the originator here, but we're going to talk specifically, of course, about the Blade films, uh, which came much later. But so, the, you know, these are both stylish action series. They're almost as much action as they are horror, but they have this kind of horror frosting on them, you know, where there's vampires, of course, and werewolves, and there is some gore and other things like that. But, you know, they are definitely as much action movies as they are horror movies, which was another trend at the time with these kind of trench coat vampires. And both of these, uh, you know, Blade and Underworld were very successful and spawned sequels and series and stars. So there is the parallel to be drawn there. So as I said, Blade actually did it first all the way back in the 70s with the comic, but then did it again first in the films because uh, Blade was released in 1998. So although the comic deserves credit with, uh, you know, that leather vampire aesthetic, I think it kind of came back into fashion around this time because of Buffy the Vampire Slayer on TV, which was 1997. So Blade was right up, you know, right there again at the forefront of this. In fact, it must have been being made at about the same time Buffy was airing to be released in 1998. Um, but it was right there at the beginning of this trend coming back. Underworld wouldn't show up for another five years. Underworld isn't until 2003, so I think Buffy was almost off the air at that point. Blade was released in 1998 and made $131 million at the box office against a $45 million budget. In contrast, Underworld, released in 2003, made $95 million at the box office and a, on a $22 million budget. So this kind of surprised me that Underworld... Uh, made less money and cost less money. I would have maybe guessed the opposite because Underworld seems so much more uh, effect heavy. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what's happening there, but that's actually the trend with these movies. Underworld movies are generally making less money and were made for less money than the Blade movies, which I thought was interesting. I wouldn't have guessed that. Blade 1998 has a 55% on Rotten Tomatoes and Underworld has a 31% on Rotten Tomatoes. Again, that pretty much uh, sustains, although there's only two more Blade movies after this, whereas there are four more Underworld movies after the first one. So Blade has two direct sequels, the first one being you know, Blade 2 was terrific. It was directed by Guillermo del Toro. I think it's probably the best of any of these movies. Um, and so it was also commercially successful. And Blade Trinity, the third movie, was not as successful. It still did make money, but didn't do as well at the box office and had much worse reviews. And I also find it to be quite a disappointment compared to the first two Blade movies. Underworld had the four direct sequels, but its actual biggest opening was uh, the fourth film, Awakening, which made $160 million at the box office against a $70 million budget. So I think it's actually the highest grossing and maybe most expensive of any of these films. It's kind of interesting that it took till Underworld 4 for it to kind of reach that status. The first one is the one I would have guessed is the biggest. The second and third films both did not do well critically. I mean, none of them do. All of the Underworld films are about in that 20 to 30 percent as the first movie. While Blade has been able to achieve these more, you know, these critical heights up to like 50 percent, Underworld's always kind of stuck in the 20 to 30 percent, but did reach a big commercial breakthrough with the fourth film, Underworld Awakening. So ultimately, all of the Underworld movies kind of bad. I watched all eight movies before doing this video in about a week. So I watched all five Underworld movies and the three Blade movies all back to back basically. And man, the Underworld series is pretty rough. I do kind of like the first film. It's just a little bit nostalgic and it is just so uh, authentic and it's like early 2000 vampire portrayal that there are things to like about it in the stylish action. But after that, the rest of the series was just a progressive decline for me. I really kind of liked each one less than the one before it. So by the time I got to the fifth movie, I was struggling with the series. Whereas I really enjoyed watching Blade again. It had been a while. Uh, the first movie is, you know, very good. But the second movie is where I think it actually kind of shines, breaks through. I think that's like one of the most important action horror movies ever, maybe. It's really, really good. And then the third movie is not good. And it kind of falls to those underworld depths. And you'll see that in the review scores, too. Blade Trinity is more in that 20 to 30 percent range that all of the underworld films are. So Blade eventually ended up kind of on that same par as Underworld, but those first two films are generally considered better. 
So I think Rotten Tomatoes in this case basically tells the tale. If you look at those scores, I would actually rank at least Blade Blade 2 a little higher than it is on Rotten Tomatoes. It's in that 50% range, and I think it should probably be a little bit above that. But the first two Blade films have the highest ranking of any of these movies. And I think that's true, and I think that kind of tells all you need to know about these series in comparison, is that Underworld, there are things to like about it. I don't mean to uh, totally besmirch it, because despite what I said, I did enjoy the movies enough to watch all five of them still. And I really am kind of impressed with how committed it is to itself and its lore uh, and its universe. I mean, they just keep doubling down on that where, you know, one movie's a prequel and then the next movie's jumping forward into the future and they really are just really invested in their own lore. But it's part of the problem with the series where I feel like Blade has some purposeful cheese. It's meant to be a little cheesy and classic horror way, whereas Underworld has some unintended cheese. And I think it's kind of being sincere or wanting you to be invested in things in a way that, you know, you, you're not. And you end up kind of appreciating it for this different reason. But it's not really what the series is trying to do. But I am impressed by how much they are committed to what they are trying to do. But Blade prevails. Blade was there first with the comic in 1973, again with the film five years before Underworld, and then with the critic scores. I think it's clear to say that if you're going to go back for a trench coat vampire for the millennium, you should check out Blade and then get to Underworld if you have time. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to like it and follow Something Spooky for more.